Hi, my name is Thomas Maurer and I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. Often when you adopt cloud computing, you're not just adopting one public cloud provider, you're often ending up in doing hybrid architectures or end up in a multi-cloud environment. And today we're going to have a look at how you can leverage the cloud adoption framework to build your hybrid or multi-cloud environment. So when you actually start with your cloud adoption journey, we have a great tool called the Cloud Adoption Framework, where I already did another video on and published it on this channel. So make sure you watch this. Um, this Cloud Adoption Framework helps you actually to find out like how do you plan, build a strategy, how to operate, how to build landing zones and many, many interesting things. Now, Today we want to focus on how you actually can leverage it if you build a multi-cloud or hybrid environment. We have some special scenario guide in the cloud adoption framework which can exactly address this. So let's have a quick look at the cloud adoption framework which you can find in the Azure documentation itself. So here we are in the Microsoft Azure documentation page and you can see here I have a couple of links to different services and products. I also have a link to, for example, the architecture center, which can help you um, build different types of architectures. But what I want to show you today is the cloud adoption framework and specifically like one part, which is we call the scenario uh, based solutions. We have different scenarios for, for example, Windows Virtual Desktop, uh, SAP, um, but then also one which I want to show you is the one about hybrid and multi-cloud. So again, as you can see here, we have obviously certain guidance and this is proven guidance um, together to developed by cloud solution architects, the um, feature teams, the program managers, um, but also customers uh, and taking that experience all together to build these guidance and tools and assessments. And again, there's a ton of stuff in here, which I showed you in another video already. But so if we want to have a look at the different scenario, we can start, for example, uh, click on the getting started guide. And what we can see here is we get some information about the cloud adoption framework in general. Um, and then I want to highlight something new here. So under adoption journeys, we have a new menu item called the adoption scenarios. So if I click on this and open this, you can see I have a couple of different uh, scenarios here, as I mentioned, virtual desktops, uh, modern app platform, SAP, but then the one we wanna have a look at today, the hybrid and multi-cloud uh, adoption scenario. So if we open this up, we get obviously an introduction into hybrid and multi-cloud. And it's important to actually define what that means because not hybrid and multi-cloud doesn't necessarily mean the same thing for everyone. So this guide actually takes care of this and speaks about the different uh, solutions here. Now you can then go down and again, uh, have a lot of information on all of these different scenarios and also about the motivations why customers are building this. And obviously there are many, many reasons. For example, if you think about hybrid, there are reasons that you just can't leverage um, a cloud provider because you don't want to build the dependency for your application. Think about if you run applications in a factory um, or run applications in a factory and they need to be available and you have a not so stable internet connection there. You want to make sure you want to make sure that the factory can still run even if internet goes down. That is like one example, but then also you have data sovereignty challenges. You have probably current investments in your on-prem infrastructure you want to leverage. And then when it comes to multi-cloud, you can also see we have a different, different reasons why customers are choosing to do that, or they just already are in the position where they are already using multi-cloud. Um, and so therefore we need to take, take care of this. But this is an essential part to actually understand why and how it actually works. And then also the concerns and the problems which come with that. One of the problems you can actually see is like by adding a cloud provider, you obviously add some complexity complexity to it. Like you need to now manage resources which are probably running on-prem, some of them at edge locations such as branch offices or factories. 
our retail stores and then you add some like new technology from a cloud computing provider uh, which again adds a ton of different um, things you need to know and by adding multiple cloud providers obviously you're not just like adding more um, in some cases you probably like add a lo whole lot of complexity to it so obviously you want to understand this and here's a very good description if you want to go into that topic and understand more about hybrid and multi-cloud now what is more important is then actually the introduction to unified operations and that is one of the main concerns when you go into a hybrid or multi-cloud environment right so if i go here into the introductions of um, unified operations we have a very good explanation how that can work and what why you would implement something like this because again you probably want to not just have like have different tools for your on-prem environment to manage your environment tools for azure and then you have other tools for other cloud providers you probably want to get that unified and single control plane um, to manage all of these and so that is that is something it's going to have a look at and it explains how how that actually works and how you would actually for example choose a primary cloud provider which would like necessary not necessarily leave all the applications there not even necessarily run all the application or majority of applications there but where you actually get the control um, uh, functionality and you get actually like the the single pane of glass um, to actually manage your environment so again there's a lot of information on that uh, and why this is important and again it doesn't necessarily be, need to be the first cloud provider you chose it really needs to be like a cloud provider which can actually um, offer you these management capabilities and it goes through a whole lot of this and, and explains the unified operation and that it's actually important to build that uh, single control plane because you want to do also cloud governance and not just for one cloud provider you want to do that over all your cloud providers as well as your on-premises environment and this is one thing where it comes in but then also when it comes to security or management capabilities um, these are important factors and so it goes down to like explaining the, the the unified operations approach here and you can see here actually what I just mentioned um, that you have your operation processes in place and then you use the primary cloud provider basically as an extension or gateway um, then um, or the technology from that cloud provider to actually onboard resources which are running in hybrid or multi-cloud environments or what we call also edge environments right so you want to have that control you take that advantage of that control plane which in azure for example would be azure resource manager and all the management services which come with it and then you would use azure arc as basically the extension or the gateway to onboard resources um, from these different environments and again it explains here a whole lot about this and if we scroll down we actually can see more information what that actually means and it actually splits the customer processes you have to manage your environment into two separate buckets one of them is actually the governance bucket and the other one is the management bucket and you can actually see like what is in there i mean especially when it comes to governance you're obviously thinking about um, security baselines resource consistency uh, but also cost management and making sure that you can keep cost under control which is also a very big factor and then when you look at the management side you obviously want to have you first of all need the visibility and the inventory to actually get all this together and then obviously add tools like monitoring or backup and, and things like that to actually uh, build that whole lot of uh, management automation around it and you can see here how we then go to the like capabilities the primary cloud provider controls need to send so we have some basic features obviously to get some visibility where we then have search and indexing and tagging and grouping of resources and we can then also leverage things like templates and automation to work with these different cloud providers or on-prem management technologies and then we also want to have some obviously enhanced visibility meaning that we want to have a monitoring solution we want to make sure that also when it comes to security and compliance that we have that single view uh, of all the resources and exactly can find out if something is 
not configured the way it should be or the one thing is not set up the way it should be. Think about keeping control of, for example, password settings or updates um, to figure out, okay, this server or this application is not um, up to date. And then also making sure that, for example, not just your servers, but also, for example, your Kubernetes clusters are configured in a secure fashion. And we can then extend this even to actually um, provide these like with like policies and do actually configuration and updates to these systems. And at the end, even put down like um, disaster recovery and, and backup, for example. So again, um, you can then also see that in this primary cloud provider, you would then also, for example, you could run different services, for example, servers, containers, application and data. Not necessarily need to do that, but obviously it makes sense if you choose your private cloud to also do that. And then you can use that management, um, this primary cloud controls actually to be extended to the hybrid uh, environments. And you can see here, then you can actually manage the same set of services running outside of your primary cloud provider. So if you look at this again, there's a description on like what that means, what I just talked about. Again, the common uh, governance um, processes and tasks here, for example, as I mentioned, cost management, uh, security baselines and stuff like that, as well as then some of the management tasks you obviously need to think of when you're actually operating a cloud environment. Now, we can also go in into actually what do these primary cloud controls mean? Why do I need them? So if you look at this again, these are all capabilities usually every cloud provider needs to offer, right, for their own cloud. But what the big difference makes here is the blue part on the bottom of this graphic here, where it actually says hybrid and multi-cloud extension. And that means that I can not only manage uh, resources which are inside the primary cloud provider, but also resources which are outside of this. And so we can then provide different um, stuff to that. And what is actually critical, as I just mentioned, is that gateway or that extension. And in the terms of Azure, this would be Azure Arc, right? So the extension basically to onboard these resources or the gateway to onboard these resources can be Azure Arc. And that would then onboard these resources to our Azure Resource Manager, which is basically the magic behind um, all the, the, the management capabilities we have and all the visibility we get in addition to obviously then the management services which are built on top of that. And so with understanding this, what that actually means, we then also have obviously some information how you can leverage Azure and what um, products and services we have when it comes to hybrid and multi-cloud. And so if you scroll down, you can see here this graphic, which is a very high level view on what is going on. Um, here and you get Azure, for example, as like on top of it, and you see that single control plane using Azure Arc. This also obviously means things like Azure Active Directory, uh, where you can extend your on premises identity solution with uh, Active Directory to the cloud, but then also includes a lot of other management services. And then we also offer that for obviously IoT devices and solutions. Um, we also offer a portfolio to like actually run infrastructure like with our Azure Stack family, which is for example with Azure Stack HCI, Azure Stack Hub and Azure Stack Edge, which can cover different scenarios depending on what you need to run in your data center or at your Edge location. And then last but not least, obviously, to bring Azure services to any infrastructure. So this is also something Azure Arc allows you to do with the Azure Arc enabled services is actually to like take a service and put it wherever you need it. Because if a customer really likes an Azure service, like for example, let's say Azure SQL managed instances, um, and he wants to use it, that's absolutely great. But in some cases they can't, right? The, the application um, doesn't really allow for that much latency because the customer is too far away from an Azure region or they have some data sovereignty challenges because they don't have a Azure region within their country. Um, and in that sense, when the customer can't use an Azure service, we actually make them the Azure service, the Azure service go to the customer. And so this is one, this is another capability of Azure Arc as well. And you can find here a whole lot more about the different capabilities we have when it comes to, to hybrid solutions here, right? 
So we obviously offer different solutions here. And then also, for example, how you actually network wise can build hybrid solutions for your environment with Azure Express Route, uh, Azure Firewall, Virtual VAN, and many other technologies which we have there. I also want to highlight one solution because it's right now it's a very interesting solution where people, especially when you build your container platforms, you, you probably want to run this on a container service like AKS, for example, in Azure. Um, and this is great. But again, the scenario is that in some cases you really need also an on-premises solution. So we have something called um, AKS on Azure Stack HCI, which actually allows you to bring these container technology into your data center or your edge location, wherever you need it. So I hope this video gives you a great overview on how you can leverage the cloud adoption framework for your multi and hybrid cloud environment. So if you like that video, please give it a like uh, and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below.